giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Getting back into the list at 15 is Team 195. From Southington, Connecticut and Southington High School, it's the Cyber Knights. They have an overall record of 70, 23, and 1, and they were the winners of the Curie Division. So just talked about their partner a little long, a little while ago. Um, just another amazing season for 195. Five banners heading into championship with a, a win in Central New York. Uh, district wins in Western New England and Hartford. Um, district Chairman's Award at Hartford and um, Chairman's Award at the New England District Championship. Some discussion this year if 199 or 195 had kind of lost a little bit of their edge. Um, but as we know, and I forget who we were talking about, who we were talking about this with, but just never bet against 195 in the playoffs. Um, just an unbelievably trained playoff team under pressure. Um, on Curry would rank fifth with a 3.1 ranking score average. They would captain the fourth alliance. Um, as kind of, like I said, just some crazy energy on this alliance, um, going on to take down the one, you know, number one alliance and then going on to win, um, in the round robin, um, they would go, I don't know, oh, they would go three and two, um, and fall one championship point from advancing. So just incredible run from them. Um, pretty accurate spot, maybe, you know, a couple higher post championship, um, with their performance there, but, uh, any comments, Tyler? I know we kind of. I, I actually think like 15 them. is accurate for them um, overall. I, I love 195. They were largely undefended uh, in most yeah. of the uh, playoffs, so it's a little bit hard to fully tell. But if I look at their maximum uh, efficiency being undefended, uh, I think they're around 10, 12-second cycles for things. Uh, so I actually think 15 is uh, is pretty appropriate for them. They're a fantastic team, and uh, obviously winning the Curie Division, taking down some absolute juggernauts mm -hmm. uh, along the way. I mean, they take out the number one and number two alliance in that division. Uh, so I I think uh, I think 195 great season for them. I think a lot of people discounted them uh, this year, and they came out uh, and just did absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I really like uh, they're on Team Turret too. So mm -hmm. um, really, just some some flexibility with their scoring there. Just a, a great looking robot. Cool. All right. That's good. Sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, there you go. Oh, I'm going to guess, what is it, 28 times now? Can, can we talk about how improved I am this year over last year with my muting? I think I've, right. made, I've made <laughs> tremendous progress in that regard. Um, but anyway, in the 14th spot. 24. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you, Nightbot. <laughs> Uh, in the 14th spot is team number 5460. From Lapeer, Michigan and Lapeer Community High School, it's Strike Zone. An overall record of 57, 20, and 2. They were quarter finalists on the Archimedes field. So taking two silver finalist medals at Milford and East Kentwood District events, 5460 would seed first in the Dow Division at MSC and it would take silver for the whole event there. After five finals matches that we talked about um, at length. So on the Archimedes field, they would again see number one with a 3.4 ranking score average, really impressive, and would lose a gut wrencher to the number eight alliance in quarterfinals, which Justin knows about quite well. So uh, being on the Archimedes field, Justin, and we're one of the teams that play against this alliance, uh, we kind of talked a little bit about it, but anything further um, on strike zone and, and whether you think this 14th rank is appropriate for them? Excuse me. Uh, I think they had a little bit of. Um... Uh, a lot of momentum heading into champs, which I think elevated their play or elevated the ranking a little bit. I'm not saying they were bad by any means. I don't think they were quite as polished as they were um, when they were playing in Michigan. Um, but they were, they were, don't get me wrong, they were a phenomenal team. Obviously, they, they uh, see the, the top of the Archimedes field. Um, but just like everyone on, on Archimedes, like I said, um, that's obviously the field I saw the most. Um, they just, in the face of defense, it was a different game. And mm -hmm. the teams that were able to, to fight through the defense the best ended up winning. Mm -hmm. And in the quarterfinals, 271, um, the, the robot we had playing defense um, was just uh, incredibly aggressive and was able to, lucky for us, was able to shut them down because they are a, a prolific scorer if you're uh, silly enough to let them um, you know, have free reign of the field. Mm. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Okay, then moving on, our, our 13th ranked team is 27-67. From Kalamazoo, Michigan, it's strike force. 58 wins, 14 losses, and we're finalists on the Curie Division in Detroit. So 27-67 started a little slow this year after coming off back-to-back -back world championships in 2017 and 2018. Uh, did not win a district event at all this year, uh, mm. but continued to pick up their play and were able to win their division at the Michigan State Championship, which, as we all know, is no small task. Uh, on Curie, they ranked second. 
uh, and selected 987 and 1756, a team that, or an alliance we talked about at the top of the show, with Argos getting picked up there in the third, uh, the third round, which was kind of incredible. Um, they were able to advance to the finals, however, uh, before falling. So another great season for Strike Force. Like I said, started off a little slow, but really ended up, uh, you know, showing what the robot was designed to do, and they played really well in a brutal division in Curie. Yeah. I, I mean, I think 2767, I, of course, there's always those woulda, coulda, should us, right? What would have happened if they were, you know, fully functional, if they didn't have to go play defense in the finals of their matches? Uh, would we have seen a different story? Maybe. Uh, and how would that have played out afterwards? I think would have been an uh, interesting to, um, topic to look at. And uh, I thought that alliance was extremely well composed that they had. So Strike Force, I mean, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, kept improving. Throughout the whole time, one of my favorite robots uh, by the time the end of the year came and got to see them compete and play. Uh, don't worry, we'll get an interview with them. Uh, I heard that there's a chance that they might come to IRI this year now. So um, so it would be great to catch them then. Uh, just uh, <laughs> talking talking uh, uh, with a couple people on the team. Love to love to catch up with them because I know they're really busy during champs and we didn't get a chance to do an interview with them. Uh, but By the way, if you're ever wondering like in those things, like how do we – decide who does it. We kind of create a list. We kind of don't, but we essentially just kind of walk around the pits a lot on Thursday and Friday. And if your team's busy, if they're not, we kind of give uh, like that three to four strikes thing. And then we just kind of say, okay, we'll try to hit up other teams later on, but we will try to get 2767 to learn more about their robot later on because what a phenomenal machine that it is. Mm -hmm. So I just realized that your name is birthday boy. <laughs> I don't know when Nick switched that. But... Yeah. Nick, so I saw him <laughs> switch it earlier. <laughs> <laughs> you don't seem too happy about that. <laughs> I'm I'm apathetic towards it. So. <laughs> I, I, don't <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I'm sorry. All I'm right. always uh, I'm always the thing with like birthdays, like or like any holidays. I'm like I just want to go celebrate because I want to, not because of specific. I'm such a nonconformist, right? Um, because because the day tells me to. Like no, I, you know, I'll go celebrate this weekend with some friends, and okay. you know what, guys, we'll work in. Uh, you can you can make it seem like Tyler's working hard on his birthday and you know working a full time job and doing the show for you and if you appreciate that like I said you can sub and give us some bits we appreciate that <laughs> yeah. that's the way that tells us that you appreciate what we do so thank you everybody Mike you want to do this one or want me to do this one um I can do it I think Christina wrote it up she did no right? go ahead yeah go doing, ahead you can do it. doing a lot yeah right, go ahead. <laughs> you can introduce it there we go so uh, our 12th ranked team written by christine thank you who couldn't be a part of the show tonight is going to be team 33 thanks thanks comcast from auburn hills michigan notre dame college prep it's the killer bees over a record of 73 and 19 were the semifinalists of the archimedes division in detroit so the bees wrapped up a five banner season on the archimedes division after seeding 14th surprisingly lower than anticipated the unique elevator and insane manipulator was an epic uh was epic with scarring cargo despite heavy defense in the playoffs they took a tough close loss in quarterfinals once the number seven alliance but went on to take the next two matches both semifinal matches were lost with a one or two point difference against the number six alliance but regardless the robot design this year as always was outstanding and another amazing season by 33 the killer bees so yeah 33 um you know i had a good chance to see them in our committees like i said where uh, we were competing um and i do think that well i again i don't know what it necessarily was about our division each of the top probably eight or 10 teams took turns just looking really bad um, and playing poorly in just a couple matches and the bees were no, no exception. Um, it was frustrating to see uh, for them and, and all the other teams that were having rough matches. Um, but we've seen, you know, we were also able to see 33 at their best. Um, and then when it's firing on all cylinders, it's a really great, uh, really great robot. Just a little disappointed. They weren't able to see their uh, triple uh, lift be successful. I know it's something they tried and worked on all year long. Yeah. Um, and in, in our match with them, they asked us if we, if we were willing to do it. And we said yes, uh, but uh, our alliance partner said no. So that was a bummer. But um, another great season by 33, of course. Yeah, it was really tough kind of watching them struggle. We were able to, I think, watch probably, I think, maybe both of their first matches, Tyler. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, we, we watched a couple years. of them. Yeah, but just, you know, started off 0-2 and, and then and then picked up a win by six points and went 1-2. and two. And So, yeah, just kind of seeing them struggle a little bit at the beginning, but um, working hard and, and uh, picked it up a little bit towards the end there. But. I mean, their first two matches of match number one against 13, 10 and 20, 41 and match two going up against uh, 20, 26, uh, 17, 20, 47, 76 uh, with not a whole lot of help on their end. Uh, and they actually won some matches. I kind of almost didn't expect them to win. Like they won one against 930 uh, by one point. 
Uh, and then uh, took a couple others as well too that I was a little, you know, a little surprised. Somewhere. I'm like, oh, this could really go either way. So, um, you know, 33. Would I put them at 12 post champs? No, I'd probably drop them down a, a few ranks for that. But still, a phenomenal team. Uh, and I agree with you, Justin. Man, it would have been great to see that triple climb go. And they tried yeah. to set up a couple of times, and they just couldn't get their alliance partners to line up right. Uh, yeah. So that that would have been really cool to see. For sure. Cool. All right. All right. And then our last team before, yeah, another break. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Mike's, Mike's nice going to talk about. <laughs> Dude, this is so whack this week. <laughs> Mike's going to talk about Team 1619. Uh, from Longmont, Colorado, it's Upper Creek Robotics, an overall record of 37-9. and nine. They were the quarterfinal, um, quarterfinalists on the Turing Division in Houston. So yeah, two I didn't believe it either. Yeah, two, two original wins for 1619 this season. They entered the Turing field uh, looking to keep up their success. They would rank 20th with a 2.2 ranking score average and would be selected number two overall. Uh, but would fall in two matches to the number seven seed. So tough luck for them. Um, their alliance partner in the quarterfinal match number two just totally decimated that their mechanism. Um, just kind of really parked there at the end. So it was really just 16-19 trying to do some scoring uh, for the whole alliance. And um, one of the first suction climbs that we saw this year, way back in premiere night, which seems like kind of forever ago, but not so long ago at the same time, um, a little high for them here at 11 for post champs, but still a, a great season nonetheless. Uh, just a really tough way to go out. It's one of those teams, like Tyler just said, kind of we we tried to get it behind the bumpers with them, but we're just really busy. I, I don't know if they had some robot, um, some robot like maintenance issues. That yeah, they were, they were working, working on the robot quite a yeah. bit. So, so uh, I don't know any other thoughts, Tyler, on them. Well, I mean, 1619, I think their robot is a phenomenal machine. They had some un very unfortunate circumstances in their qualification matches. I think some of it was on their end. I think they just didn't always perform up the par. Uh, and I, I don't think anybody, uh, a couple people that we know on the team, I don't think would necessarily disagree with something like that. Uh, and then they, so I, I think it was a mixture. I think they had. Um, some issues on their end, and I think they also didn't have the most friendly schedule as well. So I think that was the division that got redone. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think their math schedule got redone in that oh, drastically okay. changed right. yeah. uh, how, how it was. Um, so, uh, you know, they go in the quarters, they get selected uh, second, which I think surprised a lot of people because they weren't doing that great. Um, I, I thought they might have fallen a couple more spots potentially. But once again, uh, you know, I think people were looking at division. You got like, you got 3310, you got 254, you got 1619. Who's going to get picked where? Who's going to seed where? And 254 and 3310, who I'm sure we'll be mentioning in just a bit. Uh, I don't know. Even if 1619 would have went to the finals against them, I, I don't think there would have been a chance for that. So, uh, But 1619, still a great robot. Uh, and I thought they performed uh, well up to championships. And then sometimes it just doesn't happen once you get there. Mm -hmm. We need your help to keep fun at Loud, Live, and Independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.